Hey, what's up, guys? Little man with a big opinion here. Got a uh, news update video for y'all. And this one, out of all of the videos that I've made, uh, I believe this one to be one of the most important. Uh, the handful of things that I want to talk to you about really makes me feel like a World War III scenario uh, is becoming ever more likely. So it was sometime today I got the notification uh, that Russia has annexed four or five regions of Ukraine. You know, they're claiming there was overwhelming support. Uh, Ukraine and a lot of the West is claiming otherwise. Um, Russia still considers this a limited uh, military, you know, conflict. You know, they don't say it's an all-out war, but uh, it just gives more justification for Putin to con to continue doing what he's doing. And. Uh, you tie on top of that the uh, Nord 2 pipeline. Uh, this was a couple of days ago, but Nord 2 pipeline, uh, about a one mile section of it was blown up. Um, several miles of it are underwater right now. Uh, you know, different engineers are saying if it's not fixed, Within a certain amount of time, then you know it, it could be irreparable damage, and you basically have to start this all over. Uh, Russia is pointing at you know the West, saying someone in the West you know blew it up because of this conflict. Uh, the West is saying we don't know who did it, uh, but winter is approaching. Uh, this pipeline is owned 51% by Russia, uh, and I couldn't find if the other 49% was owned by Germany or if it was owned by a mixture of European countries, but uh, Russia had already shut down one pipeline to Germany. Their natural gas prices have already skyrocketed. People are worried about if they're going to survive this winter. Uh, add on top of that, that we still don't know, we don't have a full estimate of, you know, crop yields from this year, and things are looking pretty bad. Uh, you know, our economy still continues to tank. We are in a recession, technically speaking. Uh, but, you know, the one thing I would say you don't have to fear is the U.S. does produce enough food to feed all of its citizens. I can't tell you what the price of that food will be, so that's something that we have to prepare for. Add on to that, you know, just the higher possibility of conflict and, you know, there's a lot of things to worry about. Um, you know, in all of my videos, I always say, if you haven't started prepping, you know, maybe this one will be the straw that breaks the camel's back. But um, I know for myself, if I had never been a prepper, and I was hearing the news that I'm hearing right now, I would 100% be doing everything that I could to build self-reliance, build a stockpile, you know, have the materials and wherewithal to keep my family safe. Um, you know, that's me, my wife, our dogs and our cats. Uh, my grandparents live right next door. 
Uh, so, for everyone out there, oh, you know, you're not just thinking about yourself, you're thinking about spouses and children and pets and extended family. Uh, you're probably also thinking about, you know, friends in your area. If you haven't created a MAG or a mutual assistance group, then, you know, those connections take time, uh, and those bonds, you know, it's, it's not something you can do overnight, but you will be in an infinitely better position if you are, you know, prepared by any level for when the crap finally hits the fan. Um, I'm surprised in the amount of, you know, naiveness, you know, relative calmness amongst people around me. Uh, you know, as a prepper, you're considered a conspiracy theorist and crazy and that weird guy up until the point where it really matters. And this feels like one of those situations where it's going to really matter. So, what am I doing? Uh, well, the fall is coming around, so I was already planning on working on my bug out location. Uh, but I think I'm going to spend a lot more Saturdays than I planned on working on this bug out location. Uh, a small semblance of solar uh, is coming to my arsenal within the next month or two uh, and the way I've set it up it is something that I can piece together and slowly build on I'm not making a massive purchase all at once uh, and so you know that can simply start with a 30 watt panel to charge a 10,000 10, milliamp battery uh, so, you know, my small level of solar is, you know, charging things to have a USB port. Uh, I still haven't fully decided on what type of solar kit that I'm going to do. Uh, but quite a few of them have the capabilities of attaching more batteries to them. Uh, to increase the duration of the things that you have charging. Uh, so, the system that I'm setting up, uh, I'm looking at about 12 to 1300 watts with the ability to add more batteries as I go. Uh, after I get that system to the level that I want it, then it'll be adding enough solar to essentially have power 24-7. Uh, from what I understand with the batteries, you know, three or four will work, and you're using one during the day while one is charging. Uh, you've got one on standby that's already charged in case you don't get any solar. And then you have one that you're using for the night. Uh, doing it this way, none of them are going to be depleted to zero. Between the four different batteries, one's always fully charged. Or technically two are... Uh, well, pause. One is fully charged. One is being fully charged. One is in use. And one's empty. Uh, so hopefully the solar will get to the point where, you know, what you're using the night before is filled up the next day, uh, and you're using 
what was filled up the day before. Uh, a well is probably going to be put in sometime soon, or at least the groundwork for it. Um, more caches and storage of food and supplies will be making their way to the bug out location. Uh, several friends and family are on board with this discussion. Uh, you know, a lot of them live not in the same, so, you know, the same town that I live in. We're, we've got a 15 minute drive to the bug out location. Uh, some of them live 30, 45 minutes away. Some of them live a few hours away. Uh, so supplies that they have are also being prepped and, you know, sent to the bug out location. That way they don't got to be worrying about, you know, forgetting something and being so far away. You know, the storing to the rafters is in full effect. But I'm still living, you know, everyday life. Bills still have to be paid. So being financially responsible is still important. Someone hit a skunk in front of me. Uh, so, you know, you still have to work to continue to add to these supplies. Uh, more time is being devoted to refreshing myself on skills. Uh, putting skills to practice and learning new skills and printing and just having that material on hand. Uh, you don't have to own a book on every single thing in the world. Uh, it's much cheaper to print things and put them in a three ring binder. You can put them inside of a sleeve protector if you're worried about the elements. Uh, but you can develop books to your own needs uh, for a relatively cheap cost instead of trying to find, purchase, uh, and collect books that way. Uh, I'll actually, I'll put in the uh, description down below uh, access to a Google Docs that I've started putting together uh, I'm not going to, you know, give editing access because I don't want to deal with anything crazy. But if you have access to a Google Docs, then you can print the items on there. Uh, you know, you can determine if you want to do front and back, if you want certain things blown up bigger. Uh, you know, a lot of what I'm putting on there that's just you know, textual information. I'm doing four pages to one page. So it shrinks it down to where I technically have eight pages of information so I can save myself some uh, paper and ink. Uh, you know, it was only about a month ago that I took stock of what I have based on calories, based on, you know, pounds of rice, pounds of oatmeal, you know, how many servings of powdered milk do I have, you know, MREs, propane, knives, blankets. So, if you have been prepping and you've just kind of been purchasing things uh, because you know you need to make that investment into this, uh, then now is also probably a good opportunity to just... You know, be a quartermaster for an afternoon. Count your beans and bullets. Uh, and when you do that, you can then easily divide that into, you know, how many, how many days can I survive off of this meal? How many days can I survive off of, off of rice? Uh, you know, how many days can I cook that food with a camping stove instead of having to gather firewood. Uh, and then with winter approaching, approaching uh, I've got a quart of wood at my house. You know, my grandpa plans on getting some more wood. I think he's got about half a cord. Uh, 
Uh, and then we have a cord of wood out at the bug out location, already cut up, ready to go. Uh, so, you know, I would say when it comes to being prepared, if, you know, my family and my bag are going to survive, I've got us at a, an 80% level, maybe even a 90. Um, are we going to live as comfortably as we are now? No. Uh, but, you know, we can weather through certain things. But at the same time, these supplies, part of prepping is, you know, being prepared for all of your supplies to come from yourself, from your stockpile, and what you are uh, producing and being self-sufficient. Self but part of it can also be viewed as a supplement to what, you know, is already out there. If you don't have the capability to store a bunch of uh, meat and you're still purchasing that, you know, weekly and monthly, go ahead and have the, you know, the rice and the potatoes and the beans. That way you are supplementing that. You're probably helping yourself financially. Uh, I haven't looked at a 50 pound bag of rice from Sam's in a while. But, you know, because I haven't bought any of it in a while, but 90% of the rice that I purchased, I purchased at $15 for a 50 pound bag. At one point I saw it at $19.53. Uh, at some points I've seen it break into the 20s and I, I think it's gone down again. But instead of having to buy that one or five pound bag, every week or every month you've got the 50 pound bag you're saving yourself the, the three or four dollars from that purchase and it gives you a good sense of security a good peace of mind so let me know down in the comment section down below do you think what's happening currently has put you into your version of defcon 1 uh, you know, what are you doing to prepare if you're a brand new prepper? You can ask me questions and I can remake videos from the past or I can share links to videos I've done in the past. Uh, and then lastly, if you like my content, then like the video. If you like what I'm doing with the channel, then please consider subscribing. And if you have a friend or family member, that would benefit from our discussions that we have in these videos, then share the link to this channel with them. And with that, catch you in the next one.